Talked about the first game that I ever played, but the first game you ever play is not necessarily your favorite game in the world. And my favorite game in the world may not be the one you'd expect. Given how I've talked about games in this series so far, you may think that my favorite kinds are um, RPGs, like the Elder Scrolls series, and they're definitely in my top ten. Or, uh, oh geez, I'm trying to think back without looking at notes what I've talked about so far. Well, Doom has a special place in my heart, of course. Uh, let's see, there's some N64 games like uh, 007 or Perfect Dark or um, Dishonored. Love the Dishonored series. Mass Effect, we were talking about bad guys and choices. But my favorite video game of all time is actually Harvest Moon. And the funny thing is, the more I think about how much I enjoy that game and the game series, I have a really hard time explaining why. And I had this discussion with someone a few days ago where we were both just happened to talk about our mutual love of Harvest Moon. And we both had the same problem. We talked about the different things in the game that we enjoy, the different aspects, whether it's the... Um, relationships, the narrative, building up your farm, um, the business side of things that you have to manage, the different changing seasons and how that affects uh, farm life, what kind of dog you ended up choosing, that kind of thing. But after we'd gone through all that and talked about all the different things we loved in the game, neither one of us could pinpoint exactly why it's our favorite game. Like, you know how, using GoldenEye as an example, you could say, oh man, I loved the multiplayer. It was the best. It was my first introduction to first-person shooting. When it comes to Harvest Moon, I can't really pinpoint one thing about it that I love over everything. Actually, maybe that just helped me figure it out. I just love everything about the game. Okay, yeah, wow. There we go. Working through it. Process. Yeah. I love absolutely everything about that game, which actually that, you know, that fits perfectly in with what I'm trying to say here, that it is my favorite game. It's man, it's not just my favorite game. It's the perfect game for me. And I remember how I stumbled across it. I think this was back in my God, it was probably around the same time that hmm, Pokemon Blue came out the first Pokemon game for the Game Boy Color. So that's dating myself a bit. But back then. Way back in the days of cartridge games and Game Boy Colors. Yeah, when Game Boy Color was a big thing. <laughs> and a friend of mine had a copy of Harvest Moon for the Game Boy Color. And that was the first time I'd ever played it. But then I remember, geez, the next time I would play the game would be on... Oh my god, what was the name of that system? It, it, it was like Sega's last one. The Dreamcast. I think I played a version of Harvest Moon on the Dreamcast. I didn't own a Dreamcast. Someone I knew did. God, I don't know why, but I played Harvest Moon on that, and Crazy Taxi and Dino Crisis. Dino Crisis 2? Dino Crisis 2, yeah. Anyways, Harvest Moon. Played it there, and loved it. The funny thing is, when I look at everything about that game, it's like, someone actually said once, well, why didn't you become a farmer? It's like, I don't want to be a farmer. It's like, yeah, but you love Harvest Moon. That's not the same thing. That's like... There I can be a farmer without any of the physical labor. Farming itself is tough work. I've lived and worked around farmers. I've helped. I've worked on a farm before. But that's not the point. That's not what I love about it. It's, it's something about how simple and pleasant and innocent and friendly the game is. And my favorite one of the entire series was a version called A Wonderful Life. It was very, very simple. At its core, it was no different than any other Harvest Moon game. There was the farming elements. Uh, you could raise a family and have a child. I, I can't remember if you could do that in the other versions of the game. But that was definitely a big focal point in this one. Uh, and there were changing seasons and years. And as time went on, the people whose lives you impacted or that you had nothing to do with if you chose to be like that and be a bit of a hermit farmer, which was not a fun way to play the game at all, everyone would change around you. So there were three or four different people, depending on the version you had, that you could choose as your wife. And the ones that you didn't choose as your wife, they'd move on. 
They'd marry other people. They'd have new relationships. I think some of them would have kids of their own. One of them, if you didn't marry them, would be gone for a few years and then she'd come back later on. But everything would change around you. And the whole point of it was to build, by the end of your life, this beautiful narrative of your farm growing from something small to something huge. Because the story starts with you taking over a plot of land that your father had. But then, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I played it, uh, he got plot sickness and died. And then you received a letter, you come to take over the farm, his old business partner's there to greet you, and together you try to build the farm up into the farm your father always wanted. And in your case, I think it was to realize what you wanted out of life and try to discover who you were. Very much a story of... um, Love, friendship, and self-discovery. Like I said, very, very innocent in that sense. But I remember, man, I'm just I'm going on a nostalgia trip through the narrative of A Wonderful Life. I remember really noticing the impact that you have on the other characters in the game when I think it's by the time you are married and have a kid. And throughout the series up to this point, there's been an old couple who live across this little stream near your farm. And they'll come into town and they'll visit you and they're very friendly and supportive and uh, they're the nicest characters in the game. They're friendly to everybody. They've got all kinds of advice. They give you items for helping other people or just being a generally good guy, if I remember correctly. The old man teaches you how to fish. The old woman talks to you about her past and love and being nice to people and all that kind of sugar-coated chocolate chip cookie goodness kind of stuff. And then by the third season, I remember this, and it was genuinely sad. Not like Shadow of the Colossus sad or the beginning of The Last of Us sad, but, you know, tugged at your heartstrings. And I want to say it's by the third cycle in the game. And you're, I was walking across the bridge and I saw the old man standing there. And, uh, or no, 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 sorry. He wasn't standing there because normally he's there in the morning fishing and you could fish beside him and just have a chat. And he wasn't there. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go down to their house and see what's up. And I go down to the house and he's sitting on a bench. And in front of him, there is a tombstone. And I'm like, oh, boy, I think I know what happened. And you go up and talk to him. And yeah, the old lady has passed away and he is horribly depressed. And you can eventually bring him out of that sadness, but there is like a solid year where that guy is just devastated. And it's so sad because these are two characters who, they deserve all the happiness in the world. The nicest people in the game you'll ever meet. And one of the saddest things happens to them, but that's life. In fact, if I remember correctly, I believe by the end of the game, you pass away. And the farm gets carried over to your children, your son. Or actually, I think it can also just, it can either get passed on to your children or I think you can lose it altogether. Man, I'm I'm tumbling down the rabbit hole of just gushing over this game. You can see what I mean. It's one of those games that I can go back to every single time and I'll be the first to say it is a grind. It is monotonous. It is repetitive. It is so repetitive that anyone looking over my shoulder while I'm playing that I could forgive them for looking at that and saying like, wow, that is the most boring game I've ever seen in my life. But for me, there's something about that simplicity that just checks off all the boxes and it is so calming and so relaxing and so peaceful that I just love it. And funny enough, like I go back in time to when I was like a little kid and tell me that. Never would have believed you. Like Even at the time when I played the first Harvest Moon, never would have thought that that would become my f- most favorite game of all. I would have thought it'd be something like Quake, Perfect Dark, or Gauntlet Legend, something like that. But no. Throw any other game title at me, and Harvest Moon's going to beat it every single time. Which is probably a good reason for me to pick up Stardew Valley at some point. I really should. I've heard a lot of good things about that game. Hmm. Maybe I will, but I'd be curious to hear what your 
absolute favorite game is, the one that stands above all the others, holds the number one spot, the gold medal of games that you love to play. Because, well, like me, the one that is in your top spot may not seem so obvious to the people who know you. And I'd be very interested to hear what that is. So by all means, leave it in the comments. Let's see what your favorite game is. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to share it around. Until next time, I'm Rye. Take care of yourselves.